I'm Dr. Sean Bush. I'm an emergency physician and snake bite expert here to talk to you about treating a patient with a snake bite using Crofab Antivenom. Snake bite is a particularly challenging problem because of the wide variety of toxic effects. A person can present with little more than a fang puncture wound or can develop multi system failure and death. Unfortunately, it's difficult to predict which patients will have relatively mild symptoms and which will go on to develop a rapidly progressive and potentially fatal envenomation syndrome. That's why I recommend that if anyone's bitten by a venomous snake, they should go immediately to emergency medical care. And the quickest way to do this is by calling 911. The factors that reduce the chance of dying from a snake bite in the United States are rapid transport, intensive care, and anti-venom. Paramedics should transport the snake-bitten patient as rapidly as safely possible. What's going on? One way that venom injures human tissue is by digesting it. The longer the venom has time to work, the more tissue gets damaged. So, time is tissue. The sooner anti-venom can be started, the sooner irreversible injury can be prevented. Remove jewelry and tight-fitting clothing in anticipation of severe swelling. Mark the leading edge of swelling with a pen and write the time alongside. Repeat this as swelling or tenderness advance. Supportive measures like oxygen, intravenous lines, airway support, and ACLS protocol should be provided as needed. All patients with snake bites should have an intravenous line started and a normal saline fluid bolus given. Tourniquets are not recommended. Do not cut or apply suction to the wound. I don't recommend paramedical personnel capture or kill the snake. It's not a good idea to transport the snake for safety concerns. Crofab is indicated for North American crotalid and venomine. A crotalid is a pit viper. Pit vipers are rattlesnakes, copperheads, and cottonmouths, also known as water moccasins. Pit vipers have a triangular-shaped head and heat-sensing pits. Rattlesnakes have a rattle. Coral snakes are not pit vipers, and Crofab should not be used for coral snake bites. Are you doing okay? My name is Amy Savarino, and I'm here to teach you about the nursing aspects of treating a snake bite victim that's entered your ER. Nursing care is very important to the management of these patients. Watching for reaction or recurrence is key. First, you should place oxygen and monitors on the patient. Check vital signs immediately and every few minutes until the patient is stabilized. Start a second intravenous line and make sure that a fluid bolus is given. Then draw blood for labs. Maintain the extremity in a neutral position, not elevated or below the level of the heart. Ask the patient if he or she is allergic to papaya or papain. Also, ask if the patient has received antivenom in the past. Previous exposure and even allergy are not absolute contraindications to receiving Profab. However, the risks, benefits, and alternatives will have to be considered before proceeding with the antivenom. Next, you should measure the degree of swelling. Measure from the most distal fang mark to the leading edge of advancing edema. Mark the leading edge of swelling and tenderness every 15 to 30 minutes initially and write the time alongside. Document your measurements in your notes. Repeat the measurement often enough to gauge progression. Once Crofab is started, measurements should be followed every one to two hours. Perform a complete physical exam. Examine the wound. If there are only fang punctures and no other sign of envenomation, that's called a dry bite. A patient should be observed for at least eight hours to make sure symptoms don't develop. Update tetanus vaccination as needed. Patients with snake bites can develop rhabdomyolysis, which usually responds to aggressive fluid hydration, but can require dialysis if myoglobinuric renal failure develops. A snake bite can cause severe swelling, bruising, and blistering. Local effects due to snake bites should not be mistaken for compartment syndrome. A 
snake bite can also cause coagulopathy and systemic effects such as hypotension, lethargy, or vomiting. Myokymia, also known as muscle fasciculations, is a type of venom-induced muscle movement. Certain snake bites can cause neurotoxicity, so perform a complete neurological exam. For example, look for ptosis, check for motor weakness. Can you wiggle these fingers? Profab should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. The usual starting dose is 4 to 6 vials. Each vial should be vented and reconstituted with 18 milliliters of normal saline. I suggest pulling the normal saline from a 250 milliliter bag. Mix by continuous manual inversion until no solid material is visible in the vial. Do not shake the vial. Once Crofab goes into solution, the contents of the vial should be injected back into the bag of the normal saline that it was drawn from so that the total volume is 250 milliliters. No skin test is needed. Start the infusion slowly at a rate of 50 cc's per hour for the first 10 minutes. A physician skilled in resuscitation should be at the bedside. Airway equipment and epinephrine should be immediately available. Diphenhydramine and an H2 blocker such as cimetidine should also be ready. As the infusion is initiated, watch for signs of adverse reactions. For example, look at the skin for urticaria and flushing. Look in the oropharynx for angioedema. Listen for stridor. Listen to the lungs for wheezing. Watch the vital signs for a sudden drop in blood pressure. If the infusion is tolerated for the first 10 minutes, the rate should be increased for a total volume of 250 milliliters in an hour. If there's a problem at any time, stop the infusion, treat the reaction accordingly, and reassess the need to continue the antivenom. Crofab is pregnancy category C. Its effect on the fetus are unknown. Crofab should be given to a pregnant patient only if clearly needed. However, snake bite has been reported to cause spontaneous abortion. If the decision has been made to administer antivenom, Crofab should be given to pregnant patients using the same treatment guidelines as for any other patient. A vial contains up to three hundredths of a milligram of mercury. The dose is the same for children and adults. It's not weight-based. An initial dose of Crofab is four to six vials, and that dose is repeated until initial control is achieved. That is, there's no significant advancement of the swelling and any coagulopathy or systemic effects start to resolve. Local recurrence is the redevelopment of progressive swelling after initial control has been achieved. Coagulopathy recurrence is the redevelopment of an abnormal coagulation parameter or a worsening trend in a patient with prior severe coagulopathy after initial control. Coagulopathy recurrence can develop as late as two weeks or more after a snake bite. Maintenance therapy is additional antivenom given after initial control to prevent recurrence of limb swelling. Maintenance therapy is two vials of antivenom every six hours for up to three doses. In other words, given six, 12, and 18 hours after initial control is achieved. Maintenance therapy may not be indicated in certain situations. Snake bite commonly results in thrombocytopenia and defibrination. Therefore, I recommend certain labs be drawn. A CBC with platelets, PT, PTT, and a fibrinogen for starters. Labs will need to be repeated 6 to 12 hours after initial control and again before discharge to monitor treatment efficacy. A patient's lab test may need to be followed up periodically after envenomation. Patients with snake bites often require pain management and I recommend an opiate analgesic such as hydromorphone, taking care to keep an eye on the respiratory rate and blood pressure. 
non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and aspirin should be avoided for two weeks after a rattlesnake bite because they could contribute to venom-induced coagulopathies. Serum sickness is a rare but possible complication of anti-venom therapy. Serum sickness may manifest with a fever, itchy rash, swollen lymph nodes, or joint pain. Serum sickness can usually be treated on an outpatient basis with diphenhydramine and steroids. If there are any signs of envenomation, and even if the envenomation is mild, I recommend treating with Profab. Don't wait till it gets worse, permanent injury can result. If a patient requires continued treatment beyond the capabilities of a facility, transfer as appropriate for a higher level of care. Upon discharge, instruct the patient to watch for any abnormal bleeding, easy bruising, or petechiae. No contact, sports, selective surgery, or dental work for two weeks. Have the patient watch for signs of infection. Skin grafting is sometimes necessary, and if so, surgical referral may be appropriate. Also, refer the patient to a physical therapist as needed. To prevent snake bites, eliminate places where snakes can hide, like this log pile. Remove bird feeders. The fallen seeds attract rodents, which attract snakes. Wear boots or protective clothing when in the wilderness. Never handle a rattlesnake, even if you believe it's dead. If you accidentally step too close to a venomous snake, take two giant steps back. This should get you out of the snake's strike range. All hospitals should stock at least enough anti-venom to treat one patient. If you have questions about any aspect of snake bite treatment, I would encourage you to get help from a physician expert. Close follow-up is recommended for two to three weeks after the envenomation. We weren't able to give you all the details in the video, so please make sure you read the full prescribing information. If you have questions about using Crofab, contact your local poison control center. Good luck treating your next patient with a snake bite.